Hello everyone. In this tutorial, what I'm going to show you how to do is how to create a local PHP workspace for your PC. So if you are using a Mac, I have created a Mac version of this tutorial as well. But in a way, the reason why we want to do this is because it's going to be a lot easier and quicker to test and debug our PHP code that we write in the future. So to do this, we need two programs to be exact. So let's just go ahead and launch up Google Chrome. And let's just visit my friend Google. And the first software is going to be XAMPP. Some of you may or may not have heard of this software before, but just go ahead and click on Apache Friends XAMPP. And then once that loads, just scroll down and you'll see the list of platforms it supports. So we want the Windows version. We're going to click that. And then here we have a couple of steps. It's, it's fairly straightforward, but I'll go ahead and download it and here you'll see the different packages uh, we're going to go with the executable so let's click on exe and you'll be brought to another page and then the download should start automatically So I'm going to save it to my desktop, but I've already downloaded the software for your convenience. So I'm just going to click cancel for that. So here it is on my desktop. I'm just going to double click it and we're just going to install it just like any other program. All right, so next just click on run. And then we just want to hit install. And if you're running Windows 7, you may get this pop up as well. Just click yes. And the installation should begin. Now, this process does take a couple of more steps than the Mac does, but it's still fairly straightforward. So for this part of the tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through it uh, for your convenience again. So I'll pick back up after this inst installation process has completed. All right, so when you're done with the installation process, the command prompt will pop up with a list of questions or some instructions. So for this first question, we just want to click or press enter for yes. And for the next question, we want to press enter again and enter again. And next, we just can click return or enter one more time. Now here, it automatically tries to find your time zone. You can change it if you like. I'm just going to leave it as it is and hit enter again. And then next, all we need to do is we want to start the XAMPP control panel. So we're going to enter one and then press enter. And that should pop up this pop up here for the XAMPP control panel application. So next over here with the command prompt, we're pretty much done with this. So to exit, we're just going to type X and press enter. And that takes care of that. So here going back to this application here, we only really care about two components here, the Apache and the MySQL. So those are the only two that I'm going to start. So I'm just going to press start. Hit start for my SQL. And as you can see here, as it starts, it loads and then it, has this running status, which is great. So you can see if it's running or if it's not running. So if we say go back to Google Chrome, let's try to see if XAMPP is really running. Now all we have to type in here is HTTP localhost. And we should be brought to the XAMPP uh, default index page. So here you see we have a list of languages that we can select. We're going to select English. And here we are. We have a lot of different shortcuts that we can access. So this is just a really great way to make sure it's working. Visit your local host XAMPP. It also gives you more information about your local server is what I like to call this. So before we continue, there's also another program that I really enjoy using. So we're going to go back 
to Google. And we're going to type in Notepad++. plus plus. And there are tons of text editors out there, but I've had a really great time using Notepad++. plus plus. So this is what I'm going to recommend. It is a free program as well. So once you come to the Notepad++ plus plus website, click on download. And then we want to download the current version. And then we want to click this installation installer dot executable. All right. So I've already downloaded this program again for your convenience. So I'm just going to click cancel for that. And then here on my desktop, I have it right here. So I'm just going to double click it. And I'm going to click yes. Then we're going to click OK. And we're going to hit next and install it just like any other program. Hit next again, hit install. And then hit finish. And I'm just going to leave this checked. Go ahead and run it. All right, so here for the change.log, we can go ahead and right click that tab and hit close. All right, so now we have a fresh new document that we can start typing things on. So before we get into that, what I want to show you is where exactly do we place our files? All right, so we want to go to start or whatever you prefer to call this logo start. And then we want to go to computer and then we want to go into your C drive or whatever drive you may have this Windows 7 or Windows XP installed on. And here we have an XAMPP folder. All right, so we want to click on that. And then the only folder that we really care about at this point is the HT Docs. Now, if you've ever owned a web hosting account with the web hosting company, you know that there's a root folder or a Pacific folder that you have to upload all your files to if you want your visitors to see or to access. So, let, so let's just try to think of this folder, the HT Docs as that folder. So click on that. As we can see, XM already by default has two files here and a folder. So we could have already assumed that because when we went to the local host a minute ago, We can see that XM had this beautiful page here. So in a way, let's create our own folder. So just like you would in your own web hosting account, you want to create a new website or you want to create an area where people can access downloads or images. We can do that here. So let's just go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to name it the PHP basics. All right. Open it up. It's nothing there. So let's test to make sure that actual folder has been created. So here I'm just going to delete the XM and put the PHP basics. Go there. It's nothing there. It's recognizing it. So that's great to show you what happens if we type a folder in here that doesn't exist. Oh, object not found. So it's great that it is finding it, showing us that, okay, so far everything's working okay. So let's go ahead and go back to Notepad. Let's create a index page of our own. All right. So I'm just going to type a really simple PHP script here. Really don't worry about if you understand everything I'm typing here. If you do, great. You're already ahead of the game. So I'm just going to say echo. Hello, Robert. And then in this PHP script, now I'm going to save it. Save as. And something to note in my videos, I'm going to be using shortcuts. I'm not going to always go to file and then hit save as or file and hit new so just something to note but here you can see all the shortcuts to the right so again hit save as now we need to find that folder that i was just talking about the ht docs right so we're going to go back to computer find our c drive scroll down a little bit find xm find ht docs oops where did it go here we go ht docs and find the folder that we just created which is the php basics or whatever you named it so here I'm going to type index and the important thing here is the extension. You want to definitely make sure you put dot PHP or the server is going to recognize it as a PHP file. So as you saw, I had to go through a long process of finding this folder, right? So you probably want to create a shortcut to that folder on your desktop or somewhere you can quickly access this folder. So in a way, I'm just going to hit save. All right. 
So as you can see, it kind of formatted the script a little bit to help you to spot different components. And it's really helpful. That's really why I like this text editor because it shows different colors. It's easy to see comments and maybe different condition statements. So in a way, this file has been created. So since our server by default looks for an index page or index file, I should say, our browser or our server should automatically load that file when I hit refresh and I don't have to type index.php here. I can, but you don't have to. So I'm just going to hit enter. And as we can see, hello, Robert. So everything's working perfectly. That's great. Again, I really recommend this program. It's free. It installs. I mean, it includes everything that you really need to create this local PHP workspace for your PC. All right. So before I end this tutorial, I would like to say a couple of more things. First, I'll be using the Mac for the majority of my future tutorials showing you how to code PHP. But the thing to note there with PHP is as long as you have the same syntax, it really doesn't matter what platform you're on. So just an overview here, two great programs, Notepad++ and Xamp. Xamp, I really love it because it includes a lot of different components that would normally be quite difficult to install on a local PC, such as PHP, MySQL, and Apache. So it really creates this great local PHP workspace that you can test and debug your PHP code. So thanks for viewing. And that does conclude this tutorial, and I will see you in the next video.